What's happening, everybody? We welcome you back to another episode of the Gonzaga Nation podcast. Christian Pedersen joined by Dan Dickow. You're catching us talking all things WCC right now. We This is a Gonzaga podcast, but hey, Gonzaga wouldn't be Gonzaga without the rest of the WCC. Dan, I am happy to say that as I look over at my rundown right now, no conference realignment talks on this episode. So Yeah, hey, thankfully. One, <laughs> look, look, I'll tell you this, man. We are not good at consistency when it comes to promising you guys, hey, we're done talking about this. It, every Like literally last week, we, we were talking about pre-recording an episode about, hey, schedule this, that, the other, then schedule talk. So it, it, welcome to a Gonzaga Nation podcast that might only be relevant for six minutes after we publish it. But hey, we'll try and get you guys some of the best information. Dan, one thing, though, that we have consistently talked about in all of this conference realignment talk is like the value of the WCC. And I put that in air quotes because – Everybody can note value in a different way. Some people are just like bottom line. You need to win national championships. That's value. Some people are like TV money. That's value. I also kind of think that for me, value is like hypothetically college basketball is the minor league system that were the feeder system for the NBA. And so value is, does the NBA value your product? Do they pick your players? Do they play in the NBA? And we talked about the Zags that have gone on to the NBA this year. And I think that you made an excellent point saying that Chet's going to have an explosive year. And it looks like Drew Timmy on the Bucks might have a chance to, you know, ride that to a championship. Let's talk about the rest of the WCC because Brandon Pajemski last year was someone that you were really talking a lot about he gets drafted. He looks like he's already kind of fitting in comfortably into the pro levels. He's not the only one, though. There's a lot of WCC talent scattered throughout the NBA. Yeah, it's uh, it's impressive what the league has done over the last you know ten years to expand um, you know their their reach at the pro level. I mean, you got guys playing overseas, and, and occasionally we'll touch on that. But really, you know, for all intents and purposes, for this chat, we'll talk about the NBA and. I remember years ago, uh, and this was the late 90s, early 2000s. I mean, John Stockton was still playing in the WCC, um, and it was him and Steve Nash that were the only WCC players. Then Brandon Armstrong from uh, Pepperdine uh, was drafted in the first round. It kind of, you know, I think uh, allowed some others to kind of be looked at as, uh, hey, you know what? They can produce draft picks in this league. Myself. Then all of a sudden you get the spur of Adam Morrison. And then, um, you know, from there, kind of Gonzaga's pros have kind of taken off. But, you know, some of the other schools in the league have done a really nice job over the years of developing some pros. St. Mary's with Matthew Del Vadova, um, you know, comes to mind quickly. Uh, they've got a number of pros in the league in the NBA right now as well. But when you look at it, there's quite a few young guys um, sprinkled throughout the NBA that played in the WCC in the last couple of years. Brandon Pajemski, Jalen Williams, the last two years kind of came out of nowhere uh, to be lottery picks, mid first round picks out of Santa Clara. And both of those guys are, are showing the prospects to have tremendous pro careers. And when I say that, I mean, in like eight, nine, 10 year careers um, and in different ways. I mean, last year as a rookie, Jalen Williams, you know, double figure scoring showed that defensively he's really good. He understands the game. He's going to be impactful. Pajemski, from what I've watched in a couple of preseason games with the Warriors so far, um, just shows a knack to understand and know how to play the game and play the right way, which is exactly what Golden State values. Values, um, you know. So I, I don't know if he's going to be in the rotation early in the season, um, just because in, in preseason they give guys. Uh, opportunities and, and they limit the veterans minutes, but he showed some really bright spots. I think in, in, in preseason, as far as understanding how to play skill level competitiveness, I, I think he's going to be, you know, a really good pro. Um, so we talk about those two out of Santa Clara in recent years, Maxwell Lewis um, from Pepperdine was drafted. You know, he's had a, a couple uh, preseason games under his belt. Now I don't think he's as ready say as a Pajemski, uh, but when you look at um, that that Lakers roster, I don't think they want him to be ready or need him to be ready because there's really no minutes uh, on the on the on the wing for him anyways. You've already got uh, Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura, and of course LeBron James ahead of him in in the rotation for those two, three, sometimes four man minutes if they go really small. 
Um, but that's a great learning experience for him early in his career. You, you kind of keep going with pr- the Pepperdine um, kind of mantra and Kessler Edwards. Uh, he's carving himself out a nice career. Started with Brooklyn and now he's with the Kings um, and the Kings have really improved. Uh, so, so that's another player who is having a very nice start to his pro career with other guys. Uh, you kind of start looking at, um, USF, the backcourt that gave everybody problems the last couple of years, Bouye and, uh, Shabazz, those guys are, are, are fighting for training camp, um, minutes, uh, and opportunities, uh, to either earn a two-way or, or earn a, a true contract. And so those guys are a couple guys to keep an eye on. And then you look at St. Mary's outside of Gonzaga, they've had the next most uh, amount of success getting guys in the pros mentioned Del Vidova. Um, but Patty Mills, believe it or not, is still playing. <laughs> he's uh, he's with the Atlanta Hawks this upcoming year. Uh, he's kind of become uh, that veteran spark plug off the bench. Um, so he's playing Jordan Ford. If you remember closely six, seven years ago, um, eh, maybe not even that long, maybe about four years ago for uh, St. Mary's tremendous scoring guard. He is with the Kings right now, and he looks like he's got a, a really good opportunity to stick uh, with, with the Kings after training camp. Uh, and then the other couple guys that are from uh, St. Mary's, uh, or at least the other guy, I mean, would be Jock Landale, uh, who's carved out as a big, a really nice career. He, he signed an a off-season deal with the Rockets. Uh, I believe it was a three-year deal. So when you look across the WCC and the schools uh, and see what they've done to help get their guys uh, to the NBA and then have sustained success, uh, you, you got to say they've done a pretty good job because um, there, there's one thing about getting there. There's another thing about staying there. And, and I think if you look at the quality of coaches in the WCC, they've prepared their guys uh, in how they play and, and, and the value of the correct things that they coach and teach to be able to allow them to have uh, longevity in their careers. Well, and bringing this full circle back to it is a Gonzaga centric podcast. It sort of feels like in, in the span of Gonzaga kind of sprinting out ahead of the rest of the WCC to become a national powerhouse. Everyone had a choice roll over and be like, all right, great. We're, we're just, we're bound to always lose to Gonzaga, yada, 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 or try their best to, aspire to that level and aspire to that model and uh you know a rising tide lifts all boats it feels like not that gonzaga can like say hey can we put a little asterisk on all your all your so you know your pepperdine and saint mary's nba players with like put a little bulldog next to it but it, at the same time kind of feels like if gonzaga wasn't setting such a high standard for everyone else to reach to maybe these other programs wouldn't be pumping out this kind of talent am i making a crazy comparison there no, I don't think that's a crazy uh, comparison or statement. I, th- I think obviously Gonzaga has uh, lifted the level of the, the the talent in the league. But if these other programs want to continue to compete, which they've shown they do, they got to go out and recruit better players. They got to go out and develop those players. And I think you're seeing staffs that are doing just that. If you look across the league right now, um, I, you can look at, I mean, there's a couple NBA talents throughout the league, in my estimation. I think Javon Porter with Pepperdine. You see players, yes? Yeah. I think Javon Porter with with Pepperdine is definitely worthy of a very long NBA look. I mean, his look, his brother, Michael Porter Jr., is with the Nuggets. Um, So I can only imagine that his aspirations are all along the same lines. And his work ethic and, and his attention to detail is going to be very similar to allow himself every opportunity to get there. Um, so he's a, he's a guy that, that comes to mind really quickly about, you know, maybe having a chance to, to be uh, kind of talked about in those circles. Uh, Aiden Mahaney with, with St. Mary's, um, you know, obviously uh, he had a tremendous second half stretch to his freshman year. And he's going to draw some comparisons to some of the other guards that have come out of the WCC over the last 25 years. Um, but I think he's a very talented player. I think that he's a guy that if he keeps improving with his skill set and if he keeps improving athletically, I think he's going to have a chance to play in the NBA. And those are just two that come to mind quickly. I, I you know you look at uh, USF's roster. Um, 
you know, their 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 transfer portal uh, additions are very talented. Mike Shroud Jamps uh, from Dayton, who transferred to USF. I, I really like him. He's a six eight kind of. Uh, he's got the feel of a point guard uh, as far as making some plays, but he's got the size of a two. Um, I, I think he's a under the radar type of guy for 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 that league down the road. And he's got some things he's got to work on, but. The things that I've seen from him uh, last year when I saw him in person makes me, you know, at least put him on the radar. And we're just talking about three guys. There, there's, I'm sure, going to be another guy or two. Um, and that's that why you play the season. Like, that's why you play the game. Once games get going. Yeah. You you give you give people, like you said, Brandon Pajemski, a chance to go from a relatively unknown name to a incredibly, you know, like we got to learn how to pronounce this guy's name because he's a great talent. Like he's a, he's yeah. a, he's a shooter that keeps everybody on their toes. So you talk about upcoming this season and next and beyond. Let's So let's talk about this season a little bit. The media, us, I know you struggle to really self-identify as the, the media, but you are now. Uh, so let's do some media hype and hyperbole. And let's talk about a little bit of maybe preseason awards or nominations or whatever. I'll let you uh, tacitly go about stepping on toes and burning bridges with programs as you nominate one or the other to be something. But, you know, usually it's kind of fun to say, hey, who do you think is going to be the coach of the year? Who do you think is going to win the WCC? It's going to be Gonzaga. Uh, who do you think is going to be maybe the breakout player of the year? Who do you think is going to be the comeback player of the year? Any of those kind of names, minds, uh, I'll let you label them all yourself, but anything in that general category come to mind as we you know get started here in less than a month? Well, I'm going to give you four categories. I'm going to give you uh, WCC player of the year, freshman of the year, newcomer of the year, and coach of the year. Now, I know the WCC in years past has done the newcomer of the year could be a transfer and or a freshman. Many leagues do that. I don't know what the the plan is for, for that in regards to this year, but I'm going to give you those four breakdowns um, for a freshman of the year. I'm going to go dusty Stromer with Gonzaga. And, you know, I, he didn't look um, uncomfortable in the scrimmage in my eyes, uh, but you saw things you know, the footwork preparation on the catch to try to get to shots, uh, the movement off the ball, just the the awareness spatially of where to be at times uh, in that scrimmage that that leads you to say that, hey, you know what? He's thinking right now. But, you know, that's the, the jump shot uh, is pure. You know, the everything looks good in regards to scoring it. And once for freshmen, when that game slows down just a little bit, um, you know, and the light bulb goes on, you're going to have success. I, I think that's going to be the case for him. Now, the caveat on this is, is if he's not able to carve out a big role early and kind of entrench himself to allow himself to get the numbers. Because again, you got to get the numbers many times um, and that's points per game or minutes or, or rebounds, et cetera, to win these awards. But you know, I think he'll be in a dogfight with with Steel Venters for a lot of minutes. I think both those guys are going to be tremendous. I see Steel as the starter, but Dusty coming off the bench and playing big minutes um, throughout the season. Um, but my pick for freshman year is going to be Dusty Stromer. All right, that's one. Keep going. So let's go, you know, newcomer of the year. And again, I mentioned some people say freshman and newcomers should all be the same, but I don't think that's the case. I mean, newcomers, you've already had experience at the college level. You're essentially just uh, transitioning into to a new program. I'm going to split the difference here with two Gonzaga players, uh, Ryan Nemhart and Graham E.K. Those are going to be my co-player newcomers of the year in the WCC. You sound effects. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as far as coach of the year, uh, I'm going to have to go with San Francisco's Chris Gerlifson. Coach View, Randy Bennett, traditionally get a lot of the headlines and have won this award, and rightfully so. I mean, Coach Few is a Hall of Famer. Randy Bennett is maybe the most unknown coach nationally that is as good as he is. I mean, if he were coaching in a power conference, he would be a household name for every college basketball fan. Uh, he is that good of a coach. Um, so I'm going to go outside the box of those two and go with Chris Gerlifson. He and his staff have done a tremendous job in the transfer portal um, of getting one of, you know, I've seen a couple rankings where they have a top 10 uh, transfer portal class. Funny how we're ranking portal classes now in, in freshman classes, but that is the case. Um, and so it'll be fascinating to see how he and the staff kind of blend those guys. But I'm going to go with Chris Gerlifson. 
as coach of the year. And then for player of the year, this is a tough one. You know, it, it's hard to go with a Graham EK who is um, new to a program. It's hard to go with uh, an Anton Watson because he he hasn't scored it in the way that typically the player of the league in, in years past would. Um, Saint, Santa Clara, as well as San Francisco, uh, should challenge for two, three, four in the league. Um, but they don't have that name brand firepower coming into the season that would make you pinpoint a guy. And, and so that's why I got to go with uh, St. Mary's Aiden Mahaney. Uh, I talked about him a, a minute ago. Uh, you know, he's a guy that, that was a tremendous down the stretch as a freshman. We all know as Gonzaga fans, he had that big game in Moraga essentially to beat Gonzaga. Um, I would expect big things out of him. So he's going to be my preseason player of the year. Um, now, I know Gonzaga fans are probably going to, you know, have some some issues with my pick. That's fine. There's plenty of time for, for a Gonzaga player to step up. Um, but I will say this. I'm sure they would rather win a league title than have the player of the year in the conference. So there you have it, my picks. Yeah, I, Yes, I'm sure that everybody at the end would rather have a national championship than you and me farting around saying they're great or something like that. It does also – just backtracking to your pick of Chris Gerlifson and talking about Randy Bennett and I, I, the hypothetical alternate history type vibe that you could do of how good would these guys be if they were at Kentucky or Kansas or, or something like that. That's a traditional blue blood national just gets the benefit of the doubt hype machine ESPN vibes all the time. They would crush it. All of the guys that you were talking about would, would be the arenas named after them. People, you know, giving them all the praise for being these masterminds. So yeah, the competition is amazing here. And I think some people hopefully will get a chance to hear more from those coaches uh, and learn from them as you interview them during the season, but could also benefit from going back and re-listening to some of our old podcasts where you have had Gerlifson and others on here because you're absolutely right that these guys are finding the nooks and crannies like the transfer portals, like the, this, like, like they are squeezing the juice out of all sorts of things that you, you, traditional basketball fans might not understand like you know, being USF, you can't always fight the same battle in recruiting as everybody else. You got to go somewhere else. So instead of just giving up and being like, Oh, okay, well we'll go down and down and down the list. They're like, no, we're going to attack it over here because we need to like, they're not complacent and they're always gunning for Gonzaga. And it makes for a lot of really fun basketball. Dan, anything else about the season coming up uh, that you want to get out before we uh, say goodbye to everybody? Well, as we record this on a Monday morning, we're three weeks away from the opening of college basketball on Monday, November 6th. But for Gonzaga, they don't play until Friday the 10th against Yale in their home opener. So um, Gonzaga fans are probably going to have a restless three, four days in between that sixth when other teams have gotten going and the 10th. But rest assured that uh, they've got the secret scrimmage although it's not too secret anymore, with Baylor uh, in the near future, as well as the exhibition game against Lewis and Clark State on the third. So um, getting closer to Gonzaga basketball, that's for sure. I couldn't disagree with you more, Dan. Those first four days are like having the appetizers arrive at your table when you are starving. And all you need is just a little something to snack on. It's college basketball. You don't have to stress about as a Gonzaga fan. You don't have to worry about wins, loss. You just get to actually genuinely for a couple of days, enjoy some tip off madness. Remember everybody, you can follow along with everything we are doing by searching and subscribing to Gonzaga nation, wherever you get your podcasts or follow along at fan nation zags on all your social media. You can follow Dan himself, Dan Dickow 21 until we see you guys next time. Thank you very much for tuning in. We'll talk to you later.